Welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us here today. I'm very excited. We have Michael Corsentino, an award-winning lifestyle photographer, here with us to share how he takes his lifestyle photography to the next level with some Topaz tools. Hi Michael, thanks for joining us. Hey Nicole, hey guys, thanks so much for joining me <laughs> and uh, Topaz for this webinar. And thanks to Topaz for having me. Yes. A uh, couple technical things. If you have any questions, go ahead and type them into your questions module on the GoToWebinar panel that you have on your screen. I'll be answering those during the presentation, and then Michael will be answering some after the presentation as well if you have any more. If you're having any trouble with your screen or sound, usually shutting down the um, any programs that are running Flash and just logging back in usually solves the issue. And with that, I want to tell you just a little bit about Michael. Michael is an award-winning contemporary wedding and portrait photographer. And what sets his photography apart, they're really stylish, fun, very creative and modern photography. And it's kind of a blend of photojournalism, fashion, and different editorial styles. And it's made him a very in-demand destination wedding and portrait photographer. He has over 30 years in the graphic design and photography business, and he's doing better than ever in photography right now. So we are very excited to have him to show uh, us kind of how he utilizes Topaz tools within his host programs to create some, some of this wonderful photography we're looking at right now. And with that, I will go ahead and turn it over to Michael. Nicole, can I bring you with me to my sales meetings? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, guys, let's let's dig right in here and um, take a look at some images. Let's start off seeing what we can do with the Topaz tool set. We'll go over a little bit about the interface and um, you know just kind of familiarize you for those of you who are new to Topaz uh, to the interface. So Topaz works within. Um, I'm going to use it within uh, Photoshop. Michael, I'm having trouble seeing your screen. I'm not sure if anybody else is, but... Oh, there we go. Sorry about that. Oh, no. Now I see it. That's perfect. Should be right there now. Yes. Okay. <laughs> cool. All right. Let's take a look. Let's um, open up an image to start with. I'm just uh, using Bridge as my image browser for the moment. And so we'll just open this image up in Photoshop. There we go. And we'll go into full screen mode. I'm, I'm within Photoshop now. I'm going to press the F key to go into full screen mode. Use my command plus sign to uh, increase my view a little bit. And so we're starting off with the image. So the first thing that I do when I, when I kind of start to plan what I'm going to do with an image, if I haven't kind of pre-visualized already in my mind when I'm shooting it, what I'm going to do is to set a kind of a little bit of a road map of where I want to go with the image. Um, so to me, this image already looks a little bit desaturated because it was kind of an overcast day and the building, the city hall, this was a city hall wedding in San Francisco. Um, is, uh, there's a lot of gray tones in it and um, very contemporary kind of image, a little bit of a tilt. So I think I want to take this in a kind of a contemporary direction and um, kind of desaturate it to give it a very modern, uh, you know, stylish look. So that's kind of what I'm thinking before I start. When I'm, when I'm going into this. So first thing I'm going to do, when I do this with all, I'm going to go over my layers palette. And the first thing that I do every time out, because I like to work non-destructively, and you'll see that I do this over and over again as we move through a few of these images today, is I will um, duplicate the layer. And on the Mac, I do that by pressing Command-J, and that's going to give me a new layer in my layer stack here. You'll see that. And then the next thing that I'll do is I'll go over to my filter menu. Because Topaz tools are filters, I want to be able to get back to them and work non-destructively and see exactly what I've done since all the changes that I make are not really tweakable within the layer stack unless I go up to filter and I choose convert for smart filters. And by doing this, it's going to allow me to go back in and edit all the changes that I've made within Topaz if I want to. So it's just a, it's a nice kind of fail safe. So the next thing that I'll do is go down and choose my Topaz filter that I want to work within, or my Topaz tool, rather. That's going to be Adjust in this case. I'm going to Adjust. And you'll see that it's going to apply the last thing that was done with this tool. So what I want to do first off is I'm just going to zero everything out. I'm going to do that by resetting 
all. Down here, you'll see in the left hand, or the right hand palette, uh, the right hand tool set here, you can just click reset all. And that's going to just baseline everything out. So let's take a look a little bit at the interface before we, uh, before we launch into this. Over here on the left, you'll see that we've got all sorts of presets. And we have a preview window up on the top, which will allow us, and for those of you that are familiar with Lightroom, it's kind of got a similar, um, similar navigation style here. We can mouse over these presets and see uh, what we're looking at the different kind of presets. And the presets are really great because you can use them as a jumping off point, as kind of a point of inspiration, a place to start. I'm a big advocate of really going in and tweaking things and making them look your own because I never want an image uh, to be obvious to someone else when they're looking at it for them to say, oh, well, that's Topaz or, oh, that's another software you know, uh, vendor, to really pigeonhole that look to a certain um, you know, preset or action, I, I want them to, uh, you know, say, hey, oh, that's Michael Corsentino's work. So that's really how I like to work. Um, so I'm a big advocate for really going in and, and doing things individually and tweaking your stuff as you go. So let's, then we take a look over here and we've got all the controls for the particular presets. We can see all of the values that have been dialed in for each particular preset that we've chosen. Okay, so just to start with this, I'll go in here and I'll choose, let's take dramatic, looks like a pretty good place to start, that looks pretty cool. But uh, I see here that things are looking a little, and the nice thing is also, when we click on this gray area, we can see a before and after of what we've got. So we can kind of see where we were and where we're ending up as, as we're working, which is really nice. You can also press the space bar in order to do that as well, or hit the undo button, but we're going to leave it as, as it is right now. Um, and then again, these Topaz tools are super intuitive. I mean, I'm no expert and I'm able to really jump in and produce beautiful images really quickly and intuitively, which I, which I, I think is what it's really all about. We all have to maximize our time and, and we're busy and we're trying to produce beautiful and compelling images for our clients or if it's a hobby for ourselves. And, you know, we want to get back behind the camera shooting and not spend a ton of time killing ourselves. Uh, having to learn new tools and, and new new um, effects. So the other thing I want to say, I, I was talking to Nicole about this, is for me the most important thing, and I think this is true of any kind of software, you can easily overdo it. And so I think that I, I really try to err more on the subtlety side of things than the over-the-top side of things because the way I think of it is I always want my images to lead the emotion rather than the effects to lead the emotion. I want the images to tell the story, not the effects. I want the effects to support the image in telling the story, not the other way around. So that's just me, um, but that's that's how I like to work. So let's go in here, and I'm, I'm seeing that I like kind of where things are going. I want to brighten things up a little bit to start with. I'll just go over here to my brightness slider. And again, super intuitive, everything kind of makes sense, and you can also mouse over uh, these, and you get a little tool tip telling you exactly what each each uh, control will do, which is really helpful when you're learning your way around the interface. So we've brightened it up a little bit. Next thing I want to do is I want to reduce some of that sharpening strength a little bit because it's looking a little, little overall sharpening the, the detail strength. I take that down a little bit and I can increase my sharpening a little bit because I want some overall sharpening, which I like. That's looking pretty good. So again, I'm going to start check where I was and where, where I am. I just did that by clicking on the uh, gray part here in the interface. And now I will mouse down to color. And these are also, you can kind of tab these two if you want to clean up the interface and not have all that stuff in your face. You can kind of close it up. I like to work with it all open because you can just mouse down and find what you need. So the next thing I'm going to do is reduce the saturation a little bit. Let's take it down a little more, a little more. And that's looking pretty cool. Right around there, I think, looks pretty nice. Good. And I just want to fool around a little bit more with details. Fool around a little with radius and threshold a little bit. Good. Let me sharpen it just a little more. Nice. I think that's a pretty good look. And so now I'm just going to click OK, and that's going to bring us back into Photoshop. And there we were. It's looking a little, oh, that's just uh, because I'm selected there. Okay, good. So that's where we were. 
where we are. You can also do that by holding down your Option key and clicking on the eyeball layer on your very, very bottom layer. You can see where you started out and where you ended up. Okay. So the next thing that I'm going to do, and I'll do this over and over again, is I will I want to make a copy of all the layers that I have so far in my layer stack onto a brand new layer at the top of the layer stack. So again, I'm working non-destructively. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down Command, Option, Shift, E on a Mac. And forgive me, I don't have the equivalent for the, for the PC side of things. I'm a Mac guy, but for those, uh, it's just uh, Command, Option, Shift. So you would just replace the Command and the Option key on, the, uh, on a PC. So this has given me a brand new layer to work with of everything that I've done underneath there. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do again is go to Convert for Smart Filters. And I've got a nice smart layer filter now that I can work with. So again, that's just giving me the option to go back if I wanted to. For example, I could click on this layer and it's going to take me back into Topaz Adjust. You'll see down here that that's, what this, that's the filter that I use on this layer. So I can always go back into that and work on that. And that will be the same case with this. So at this point, I want to go in, and I'm thinking that the image looks nice, but it could, it could benefit from a little bit of warmth okay, overall. Now, I want it to desaturate, but I also want to bring back a little bit of overall warmth in the image. So what I'll do for that is I'll go back to Filter, and I'll go to Topaz Labs, and let's go to Lens Effects. There we go. And again, I'm going to reset all, so I'm not picking up what I did last time. I was in the program here. And I'll go up and select Single Tone. And go here, and then I will zero out all of my uh, tone controls here so that I don't have any kind of control. Now I'm back to where I was, which is that desaturated image. Now I'll go down here to the yellow slider and just kind of intuitively see what's looking good. Now I like that, but it seems like it's bringing in a little bit of a green, even though it just because of the image, there's no real green in it, but it looks a little, to my eye, a little, I don't really care for the tone yet. So I'll bring in a little bit of cool, a little bit of blue, and then I can increase the yellow a little bit, and that's kind of starting to look like something good. Yeah, I like that. That's pretty cool. Maybe a little more yellow. Good. Awesome. Okay, so now I will click OK. Now, you can, as you move through this, do multiple, uh, multiple effects within the same dialog as you're, as you're going. But I like to do one thing at a time, you know, come back out into Photoshop, you know, so I'm working non-destructively each time. Then I'm going to duplicate the layer again into an, a new copy of the entire layer stack, and then come, go back in uh, as a smart filter object. So let's see where we were and where we are. And this is what we just did. We just warmed it up a little bit. You can see a little bit of warmth, pretty subtle, but it does add some warmth. So now we'll do that same layer stack thing, which again is Command, Option, Shift, E. It's going to give us a brand new copy of everything we've done thus far. We'll go to Filter and Convert for Smart Filter. So let's go back into Lens Effects, because now I think what I want to do is focus in some attention on our couple there. And I'll do that by adding um, a vignette. And actually, before we do that, one thing that I, that I really like to do um, with images, especially this kind of image, is I like to give it a kind of dramatic crop, a real kind of cinematic crop. So what I'll do is let's give this a nice 15 by 30 crop. So we'll say the width is going to be 15 inches, and we'll take the height to 30 inches. We'll leave the resolution the way that it is. This is a little bit smaller for the webinar. And we'll just do this. Hopefully we can crop this with the smart filter on there. And that's looking pretty good. There we go. All right, perfect. So now I think we've really, really honed in more attention on our couple. We've got a very dramatic crop, very contemporary looking crop, not something that you see every day. Again, a real important thing to differentiate yourself in your marketplace and with your clients, the kinds of images, the kinds of crops, all those things play into it. So first off, right off I see something that jumps out at me when I do this, because these guys look a little dark. So even before I jump back into, uh, into my Topaz toolset, 
I'll teach you guys a little Photoshop trick, and this is how we burn and dodge, this is how I burn and dodge in Photoshop. There's lots of different ways to skin a cat in Photoshop, but I find that this works really well for me. I'll select that layer just so I'm at the top of my layer stack. I'm, I'm going to go down here to the bottom of my layer stack, Oops, and click on the new layer icon right down here. That will give me a new blank layer. Then I'll go to my blending modes drop down here, and I will choose soft light. So what I've done is I've given this a blending mode of soft light, okay? And then I'm going to go over to my brush tool. You can also get there by hitting the B key on your keyboard. And I'll make sure that I'm painting with white. And if you have different colors in here, you can just press the X key, and that's going to reset your colors. Uh, you can also swap the colors by hitting the D key. Or, I'm sorry, the D key will reset, and the X key will swap. So I want to make sure that I'm painting with white because I want to lighten. I want to paint with light color. And I will hit the 2 key on my keyboard to change the opacity up here to 20%. And the nice thing about doing it this way is you can build as you go. So I'm just going to paint in a little light on them, brighten them up a little bit because they're looking a little muddy, a little dark. And I think that's kind of helpful. So let's see what we did. That's where we were. Okay, so you can see that we've kind of given them a little bit of, uh, little bit of light. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do and so again, we're going to copy everything. We'll do that command option shift E. We'll go back here and we'll convert for smart filters. You see, I'm going to do this a million times, guys, so just bear with me. And then finally, we're going to go back into lens effects and find our nice vignette. All right, cool. So let's reset all. And in lens effects, we need to just hover over this little triangle. Sometimes this will close on you. So we'll just open that up to reveal. And let's find our vignette. Click Add Vignette right here. And I'll mouse this open. And I will just lower this a little bit to kind of see what I'm doing now, as you see, is I'm drawing in attention to the center of the frame, to, to where our subjects are. And then I'm going to increase the uh, work with the size here and the threshold. And you'll see I'm going to really go all the way on this. So you'll see. You can see just where that's happening. Okay, that's that's how we're controlling that. So as we move to the right, we're softening that transition. And I think a, a soft transition in a vignette is really important because they can look kind of heavy-handed, a little obvious, and that's really the last thing that I want. I want it to be nice and subtle, but I really want to you know put the attention where it's supposed to be. So let's flip around with this. That's looking kind of cool. A little too much. Let's see where we were. And where we are. Okay, nice. I think that's looking kind of cool. Give it a little bit less strength. Good. Okay. Apply that. And there's where we were and where we started out. So let's take a look overall where we uh, where we started out, where we ended up. So I think that's looking pretty cool right now. But we can do even more. Let's take this another step further. I want to I want to add a little more contrast, a little more punch back into this image. Uh, because again, I think they're looking just a little bit flat in there due to the uh, original saturation. So let's, again, we're going to Command Option Shift E. And we'll go to Filter and Convert for Smart Filters again. And you know, well, you can flatten all of this when you're done, but I, I'm really kind of a nut about like uh, having the um, options of going back and tweaking what I've done. If something goes awry, I just don't like what I've done. So that's why I really I do this constantly. Um, so now let's jump back into adjust. Okay, and let's zero that out because that does not look good. And the next thing that we're going to do is let's fool around with our adaptive exposure. Now adaptive exposure and contrast together really work nicely. Give you a nice bit of pop. You can see that we're adding, adding that contrast as we go. And I think that's pretty good right there. And there we go. I mean, I, I think that looks pretty cool. Uh, nice, nice image for a client. Nice image for you. So let's take a look at where we started out. Again, that's where we started, and that's where we ended up. So pretty cool. I like that.
Hey, it's looking good. Um, can you do the before and after just a little bit slower? I think some people are, are the the lag time might be a little too much. Oh, you bet, absolutely. So, um, and you tell me how, how we're how we're doing here because um, I'm seeing the uh, the after. Mhm. Mm okay, and now let's take a look at the before. Yes, I see it now. And there's the before. So what we can also do is we can um, let's jump out of this. And we'll just minimize this for a second. We can duplicate this. Let's duplicate. Okay. We can just put them side by side. Oh, that's a great idea. And that's where we started out. Very cool. So you can see how just with a few clicks and, and just being intuitive, and again, you'll see me go through these as I, as I go through these images, that there's really, I don't have a direct path for any one image. I have a kind of style and a look that, I, that appeals to me, but it's always very intuitive and it's always kind of try this, see if it works, maybe not, try it again, maybe add a little more, maybe take out some. That's really how, how I work. Um, so you know, everything is kind of tailored to what the image calls for and what the image is kind of telling me and, what, and the story that I want to tell with that image. So any questions um, on these images or do you want to wait for questions till the end? Um, I have a few questions on smart filters that might be um, good to, to go over now. Um, what is the purpose of using the smart filters? A couple people are asking again. Sure. The, the purpose of the smart filter is basically like if you were just to apply uh, a filter, any filter, on a layer, it would be destructive. In other words, you would not be able to see what you had done. You would not be able to go back and edit what you had done individually on a, on a slider basis. So you couldn't go back into Topaz you know, and adjust the correction that you had already made to that layer. So creating it as a smart filter allows you to click back in. Let's see if we can bring one of those up. So let's just cancel out of our duplicate. And we'll go back here and let's um, we'll just launch this smart filter. There we go. So what we need to, I don't go back all that often, but so you can see, and we'll just zero that out. So that gives me the ability, just clicking here on Topaz Adjust, right down here, allows me to go back and tweak what I've already done. Now, if I had not saved that as a smart filter layer, I wouldn't be able to do that. Does that kind of clear that up? Yeah, and that actually clears up quite a few questions about how to go back into it and does it keep all of the settings and it does. So yeah, I think that answers a lot of the smart filter questions and we'll just get to the rest of the questions at the end. Awesome. Okay. All right, so let's move on to our next image. I'm just going to close out of this. So yeah, guys, really experiment with your cropping and, and you know, I, I think you'll find that it, it really can do a lot for your images. Let's see what we're going to choose next. Let's take this one, I know you guys have seen this one on the intro, so let's work with this one. All right, kind of a contemporary uh, family image. Just move us out of the way. We'll get into our little screen. And so again, what first thing we're going to do is we're going to duplicate our layer. I'm going to do Command-J on a Mac to duplicate my layer. We'll go over to my Filter menu and choose Convert for Smart Filters. And it says here uh, to enable re-editable smart filters. Selected layer will be converted into a smart object. And you can click on Don't Show Again if you want, which I'll do at this point because we already know what that's going to do. And you can see right down here, that's giving us this little symbol, which is letting us know that this layer is, in fact, a smart object layer, smart filter layer. Okay, so that's what that little symbol means. All right, let's go back to Topaz. You can see also you can run the same filter under Filter Menu. You can run uh, Topaz Adjust 4. This will give me exactly what I did the last time, and there's a quick key there, uh, Command-F. So if you wanted to redo what you had done the last time, you can do that, but just be aware that it's going to be exactly what you did last time. So I rarely choose it. Um, so I'll go over here and choose Adjust 4. It's going to bring us in our interface. And I'm going to reset all to zero everything out. And I will, let's click on Photo Pop. I think that's kind of looking kind of cool. And there's where we started out. You guys seeing that? That's our original. And what Photo Pop did right out of the gate. So I think that is looking pretty cool. Um, so, but I want to tweak it. I want to make it um, look 
better than it does, which is great that we can do that, that we have these controls over here. So what I'll do is I'm going to start by increasing my sharpening a little bit because I want to give it a little bit more of an edgy look. So I'll bring my sharpening, let's get the sharpening up to like 20, see how that looks. Looks kind of cool. Some strength up a little bit. Now, ah, there we go. It's looking a little edgy, nice. And let's see what else. We can take our shadow point down a little bit. We can do a little overall brightness maybe. Just a little bit. Good. I think it can be a little sharper still. Want to get a little bit of edginess. And you know, one thing that you can do also is just take, take the effect all the way into crazy land and, and then kind of dial it back down, which is what I kind of like to do because you can always modulate these things later and with the use of smart filters, you can go back in and tweak them as well. Uh, let's go down here to saturation because I think we could use a little bit of a color boost here in this image and we'll increase the saturation a little bit. That's looking kind of cool, maybe a little too much. And that's looking okay to start with. Um, let's see if I'm missing anything here. Uh, let's try saturation boost a little bit, maybe. There we go. Okay, so we'll click OK. And that's going to bring us back into our interface. And again, I'm going to click on the bottom layer here by option clicking on the eyeball to show where we started out and where we are right now. And I think that looks pretty good. Um, so again, at this point, I'm going to take a look at the image, kind of assess where we are and where this image is going. And I see there are a couple things I want to correct. And one of those is doing some localized burning and dodging. So again, I'm going to go down to my layer stack and I'm going to click on my add new layer change the blending. I'm going to start to move a little bit quickly because some of these things I'm repeating. Check, choose soft light for blending mode on my new layer. I'm going to make sure I've got a brush selected, which I do. I'm going to paint at 20% opacity in white. And I'm going to go here and just kind of lighten up a little bit on the faces and the jeans. Just kind of bring a little bit more attention where it's needed in the image. Good. And then I can, I can use my X key to switch to black. And I can also do some burning where I want, where I want to take down information. The shoes are looking a little bright. I'll darken these up, kind of paint in a little. You can, you can get really detailed with this and go in and kind of chisel features and, you know, make the muscles look more, you know, increase the musculature and, you know, really paint with light, which is, which is great. You just kind of paint over the shadows and then switch to white and paint over the highlights. You can really add some drama when you're doing with localized painting to your images. And again, you know, keeping it subtle and keeping it real, but just really uh, increasing what's already there and kind of heightening what you've got to work with originally. Let's kind of add some contrast. All right, cool. That's looking kind of good. So now I'm going to uh, command option shift E to duplicate everything that I've done before. Give me a brand new layer to work with with everything I've done below. And I will convert to smart filters. Cool. And I'm still thinking that maybe this could use a little bit more detail, a little crispiness. I want a little crunch to this image, a little bit more. So I'll go back to Adjust. And I'm going to reset. That looks way too much, so I'll reset that. And let's take a look. Let's try our sharpening here. Uh, let's let's just use our strength. Increase our strength a little bit more. Yeah, that's looking pretty good right there. Good. Okay, so again, there's where we were. We started out, and there's where we ended up. So it's again, these are subtle moves. They're not hugely dramatic, but but um, I think that they're helping. They're helping with the background. They're definitely helping with the edge detail. So we'll click OK on that. And one thing that we can do if we weren't happy with how this looked on our the skin, because sometimes you know, sharpening can be a little have kind of a negative effect on skin, what we can do is really easily go down here to the bottom of our layer stack. We've got our layer selected, and click on a layer mask, which is this little uh, square with a with a donut shape in there. We we'll just click on that. That's going to give us a layer mask, 
Now we paint on that layer, you see that it's white, so all of the effect is showing through. White reveals, black conceals in a mask. So what we'll do is we'll just hit our X key to switch to black. You'll see that my painting switched to black here that I've got loaded into my brush. And my brush is selected. I'm at 20%, so I'm gonna, I can change that to whatever I want. In this case, just so you can see the effect more dramatically, I'm going to hit the zero key on my keyboard. That's going to give me 100% opacity in my brush. So I'll now be painting with 100% black on this white mask, and that's going to end up hiding that sharpening on our skin. So if we wanted to kind of soften the skin up a little bit, but leave those background details nice and sharp, and the clothes we can keep sharp too, you can do that. And when you're working on portraits, sometimes you want to go in and, and, and uh, short, you know, leave eyes and nostrils and mouths really sharp, but you want to soften some of the skin. And we'll do one of those if we get to the, one, the, the images later that, uh, that I have a portrait image to show you. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. And let's duplicate everything that we've done. Again, Command, Option, Shift, E, and convert for Smart filters, now we've got our smart filter icon. We know that we can go back to whatever we're going to do next. Guys, any questions thus far? Nicole, anybody have any questions? I know we're kind of covering a lot of ground. Yeah, um, just a couple um, questions for your workflow. Are you using a Wacom tablet? I've had a couple people ask. I am, I am, yes. Thanks for asking. Yes, okay. I do. You could, what, the things that I'm doing, you could do with, uh, with a mouse, but I advise anyone who wants to make their life a lot easier, I, would, I don't know what I would do without my Wacom tablet. I'm a big fan. Good. Okay. And also, let's see here. I had a couple other quick questions for you. Sorry, I just lost it, though. <laughs> no worries. Um, oh, uh, Philip asks, are there any negatives that are associated with smart filters? Everybody's really enjoying that they're learning more about smart filters, so there are quite a few questions about that. Sure. Well, the, ne the only negative is going to be um, size of your file which is why I would say at the end you probably want to flatten unless you have, you know, a hard drive space to spare, which, you know, I don't know anybody who really does. Um, you know, files build up pretty quickly. But so I would say um, that what you want to do is flatten at the end, or you can flatten as you go. Like if at this point you're like, you know what, this is good enough, I I'm comfortable with where this image is now, then maybe I would flatten and then I would duplicate that layer and then I would make that a smart filter so I could kind of condense everything down and then start again. Perfect, and that would, that answered a few questions right there, so that's great. And one last question, then I'll let you get back to your images. Sure. <laughs> um, Roddy would like you to show, just um, within Photoshop, if you could show him how to unlock that background layer. Um, how do you mean unlock the, oh, unlock the background layer, sure, mm -hmm. sure, sure. All that you have to do to unlock a background layer is just double click on it, and it becomes all zero, right, layer, perfect. Zero. Right? Okay, and go on. <laughs> okay, <laughs> right on. All right, so I'm going to go back up here and select my top layer. And uh, the next thing that I want to do is, uh, again, you know, the part of the workflow is now we've done kind of our effects, we've gotten it kind of to a point that I'm comfortable with, and the next thing I want to start to really finesse the image. So to me, there's a lot of background information in this image, and that helps the image, but it also can kind of hurt the image at a certain point. So I, I want to focus in my attention onto our subjects, which is what this image is all about. So I'm going to do that by adding a vignette. And to do that, I'll go to Lens Effects. And I'll reset all, once again, so that we're not blowing out the image. And I'll click on Add Vignette, and we've already got that loaded in here. So now I'll go in and dial in my vignette effect. So let's go to negative value, and we'll try somewhere around 10 or 11. And let's take our size to like somewhere in the 60s or 70s. And our transition, go down to like 28, just to really kind of close that circle down around them a little bit more. There we go. So again, I'm going to go all the way in here. Can you guys see that? That that's really exaggerating the effect, so you can kind of see that rectangle with oval edges, oval um, corners there. So then I'll jump back to where I want it, which is around 28%, 30%, somewhere around there. So you can now it's a much more natural looking effect, right? All right, cool. So let's click Apply. And we can see what we just did with that layer. We added a nice bit of drama 
in there by really focusing in our attention on them. Now, one kind of um, negative that can happen from adding a vignette is sometimes you can get some spillover into areas that you don't want to darken, which is what's happened here. You can see that as I kind of turn this layer on and off, we can see that I'm getting some darkening here on our uh, subject over here that I, that I really don't want. I'm potentially on uh, the top of our father's head here, and so what we'll do is we'll just, to correct that is simple enough, we'll just add a layer mask. We'll click on our layer mask icon down at the bottom of our um, palette here, a layers palette, and that's going to give us our white mask. And again, we've already got black loaded into our brush from the last time that we painted. Our opacity is at 100%. And again, you can vary the opacity if you want. If you didn't want, if you wanted, say, 50% uh, lightened, you could do that. But I'm going to go at 100% because I want 100% of the value of what was here previously. I'm just toggling that on and off so you can see. And I'll just paint back in what was there before. And you can see that uh, there's some lightning happening on his pants as well. I'm going to do this just on all of them just to make sure. You can see that we brightened up our dad a little bit as well. And I'm probably going to do the same thing with the daughter. And there we go. So what I'll do here is I'm going to turn on and off this layer mask by holding down my shift key and clicking on it. And you'll see what we've, what we've ended up uh, lightening. I'll do that slowly. I keep doing that too fast. <laughs> okay, so that's, that's without on the painting on the layer mask that we did, and that's with. Is that coming across? Yes, it's coming across on my screen. Okay, beautiful. Yeah, I can see it. It's subtle, but it's, it's really you know. effective. Yeah, it makes a difference for sure. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at this point, if we wanted, what we could do is we could go in, we could add another soft light layer, and we could switch our brush to white, and we could change our opacity to 20% by hitting the 2 key on our keyboard. And we could go in and we could just even dial in a little bit more lightness. Again, working intuitively as I go, letting the image dictate every step of the way. You know, you darken the background and sometimes the foreground can look a little bit dark and maybe you have to go in and make an adjustment as you go. Um, so I just added that. That gives me a little bit of lightness, looking maybe a little too much. I'll just type in 50% opacity at the top of that layer right there. Nicole, I hear you feverishly typing away. Are there questions? <laughs> no, just answering some. Uh, okay. Lots of questions about whether or not you'll be coming back. They really enjoy this. So. Excellent. Cool. Yeah. And okay. just to let you know, we have about 10 minutes left. Oh, boy. Okay. So let's, um, what we can do, we can do at least another one or two images. So let's um, duplicate everything that we've done here. I'm just going to do uh, Command Option Shift E. Oops. What's going on? Command Option Shift E. That's going to give you the new one. And we'll go to Convert. Smart filters, beautiful, and then let's go back into, now what I want to do is, we talked about the background before, and we said, okay, well, the background's great, and it's really colorful, and it's got a lot of information, but I want to minimize some of that information. I did that previously with a vignette, so the next thing that I want to do is I want to give a kind of a subtle blur around the edges of the image to, again, to soften all that detail and all that information and really make this image really more about the subjects. So I'll go back into filter, I'll go to... Lens effects, reset, and I'm going to go up here to center focus, which is a bokeh effect. And I'm not talking about um, some place in Florida, bokeh. Um, sorry, bad photo joke. So now we'll go here, and I will dial in the effects that I want, because obviously this is a little too much. And so I'll take this down to around 24. And we'll take this I'll focus width. We're going to increase the width up to about 80%. And you can see what I'm doing is I'm lessening the effect overall, and then I'm taking the effect away from the center of the images, which is where our subjects are. And we'll leave this kind of the way that it is right now is looking good. And you're going to see that right now, it's obviously, it's not going to be the final. So I'm just, but I'm going to click this because I want to leave this the way that it is and attack this, uh, finessing it in the layer stack. So now you'll see that we've got all of this looks real fuzzy, and that's not what we want. So first thing that we'll do is we'll reduce the opacity of the layer, and we'll do that just by clicking in our layer, uh, clicking on our layer, and clicking in the opacity field, and typing in 50%. To start with, that's going to lessen the effect quite a bit by 50%. You can also drag under this um, under the name here, opacity. That's going to give you a scrubby slider, which will allow you to kind of finesse that amount, that value. So we'll leave it at uh, well. Let's take it down even more. Let's take it down to about 30%. Uh, maybe 40. Let's settle at 40. Split the difference. Um, and 
take a look there. You see that that's giving us a nice subtle uh, little uh, softening of that stuff there, and I think that's helping the image. And the next thing that we're going to do, we're still getting spillover onto our subjects. You can see obviously that that's happening. So how we how do we attack that? How do we correct that? We just give ourselves a layer mask. We click on the layer mask icon. We'll make sure that we're we have black loaded in. I'm going to press the zero key to get myself 100% opacity in my brush. I'm using my brush. I'm in black. I'm on a white layer, and I'm going to paint to bring me back that sharpness on our subjects. There we go. And we're getting some sharpness back on them. I'm liking it. Beautiful. Good deal. And the next thing that I want to do is change my brush opacity to 50%. And I'll do that by hitting the 5 key. And you can see that that reflects a new value up here in the opacity. And I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to overall just kind of take some of that softening out of the middle and the edges just so I'm creating a soft effect, soft transition between that effect. You can see how that's being reflected with a lighter color on my layer mask up here. And now I'll turn that off and on. And you'll see that I've just given myself a nice subtle blur. If I wanted, I could always increase the effect back up if I wanted a little bit more, which I think it could benefit from overall. So 58, 60%. So again, that's, what, that's where we are. So you can see that it's just kind of blurring out that background a little bit might be a little too much. So let's go back down to 50%. OK, and then we're going to duplicate everything again that we've just done. Command, Shift, Option, E. That's giving us a new layer. Smart filter, convert for smart filters. And we'll go down here to Topaz Labs. And let's, again, we're going to darken this a little bit more. We'll click on uh, Lens Effects, because I still think we could darken in a little bit more. And again, this is how you're working always intuitively, always kind of you know, looking at where you are and going back. So now I'm going to just reset all. Sometimes I have to cancel out and do this again. So let's just do that again, so picking up a little bit of that, um, what we did last time. So we'll click on Lens Effects. And we'll just reset all. Good. Oh, I don't know why it's doing that, but let's just continue on. It's picking up that um, adjustment, which we don't need. And we'll click on Vignette. There we go. Now we're back to we need, and we'll just darken this in a little bit more. There we go. You can see how that's helping us quite a bit. And I think our transition's looking pretty good. We can always lighten the strength in our layer if we want, if it's too much, but I think that's looking kind of cool. Yeah, that's looking good. All right, let's give ourselves a layer mask, and let's make sure we're painting in black. And we can reduce our brush. By the way, reducing and increasing your brush, you can use your bracket keys to do that. I'm using my, my uh, open bracket and close bracket keys on my keyboard in order to change the diameter quickly of my brush. I'm going to switch to 100% uh, by pressing the zero key on my keyboard. And I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to brighten up our subjects again just so they're not, they're not getting hammered by that vignette. Good. And I'll just brighten up a couple things maybe down here. A little bit there maybe. Switch to 50% by hitting the 5 key. Just want to make sure that there's light where there needs to be light and dark where there needs to be dark. Good. I think that's looking pretty good. We're going to do one more thing before we wrap this image, but I want to show you where we started out. I'm going to hit the Option key and hold down the eyeball on my bottom layer. And that's where we started. And that's where we are. I think that's looking pretty cool. So let's duplicate everything that we've done. Again, Command, Option, Shift, E. That's giving us a top layer of everything that we've done. And we'll go to Convert for Smart Filters one last time. And the next thing that we're going to do is go back into Adjust. And this is where I'm going to finish the image off using um, Contrast and Adaptive Exposure. So I'll just click on Adaptive Exposure, reduce this a little bit, and Contrast. And we're getting real close here. That's looking pretty good. I think we're good. Maybe we could add a little bit of sharpness. So you can see the difference. We've just given it some real sizzle. Even that's looking. You can always kind of modulate it later in layers. And there we go. I think that looks pretty good. Maybe take it down to 80%. And I think that's good. I think we've got an image that looks really dynamic, uh, crispy, and cool, and punchy, but it's not so over the top that it looks fake or false, or that someone's going to say, hey, oh, that just looks like an effect. 
that they're going to say, oh, wow, cool image. And that's really what I want uh, from the tools that I use. And Topaz really lets me do that. So again, here's where we started off. Doing this, pausing this a little bit longer for you guys so you can see it. And here's where we ended up. There you go. All right. Very cool. Thank you so much for that presentation. That was a lot of information, and everybody's um, very thankful for all the explanation you did. So that's great. Absolutely. All right. We do have a couple more questions. If you have any questions directly for Michael, um, go ahead and type them into your questions module, and I'll ask him. And any other questions, I'll be answering um, by uh, typing if you just have technical questions about the program. Okay, let's see here. Okay, uh, they have a, why go and add a second vignette rather than going back to the first vignette and adjusting it there? Uh, good question, because th that vignette is hidden at that point. It's all the way down at the bottom uh, somewhere in or in the middle of our layer stack. So since we've created those layer stamp copies of everything, that's no longer uh, visible to us. So we would have to go all the way back there, and I've layered new effects on top of it again and again. So that's why I've done that. Okay. I and also and I just like to layer effects as I go rather than uh, go back and tweak it. But but that's mechanically, physically, it wouldn't work. Okay. Do you, how do you, uh, one more time, if you could explain how you make a copy of that, of everything. Um, oh, sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we'll do it here. So what I'm going to do is, and forgive me, I don't know where it is in the menus. I don't even think it exists in the menus. But what you do is you hold down Command, Option, Shift. And let's see, that would be Control, Alt, Shift. Um, Control, Alt, Shift, E. And that will give you a brand new copy of everything that you've done thus far in your layer stack. So in right. other words, I could turn off all of these layers here, and I would be looking at what I'm seeing here. Is Perfect. that clear? Yes, definitely. Yeah. And a couple more questions here. Um, do you usually work in RAW? That's a question for I you. I do. Yes. I do. I find that RAW gives me a lot of flexibility, gives me the most information that I, um, that I can possibly have, which is really what I want. Um, you know, I may end up converting to JPEG, but more often than not, I, I start uh, with a raw file and then I uh, open it through Lightroom uh, as a TIFF. Okay, great. Thank you. And last question um, before I announce the winner of our giveaway. Let's see here. Um, if you could give a very brief overview of how you approach a portrait if it's different than what you just did here. Um, well, it's not. I mean, I like to think that this is a portrait. Um, I, I have a portrait image that I can show you. Uh, I mean, I, the way that I approach a portrait, it's such a broad question. I don't know. All I can say about I, what the way I approach a portrait is uh, I want, and you guys can see on my Facebook page and also on uh, over on uh, Westcott, uh, Westcott Light, West, actually a Westcott company, I just did a Memorial Day uh, tribute to veterans. Um, there's a whole portrait series. That I, so that's kind of a good example of some of them. Um, more kind of documentary uh, portrait work. Um, but I want my portraits to tell a story about the people that I'm photographing. I want my portraits to reveal something about uh, the subject. That's the most important thing to me in, in a broad sense. You know, not from a post-processing standpoint, and I'm not sure if that was the question, but if I had to say broadly, what I, the, the most important thing to me about a portrait is that it's going to tell something about the subjects, it's going to reveal something about the people that are being photographed. So here's a, here's a portrait that I did of um, this family. This is the same family. Uh, I was going to do a black and white conversion for you guys, but we didn't, I think we ran out of time. But, um, you know, I'm looking for drama, I'm looking for uh, interest of, you know, uh, something that th this, this image was done um, for a spiritual uh, healer and singer who was doing an album. Uh, so again, I wanted to I wanted that portrait to say something about her to really reflect something, give something to the to the viewer about who this person is. So that that's really kind of what I'm doing. Um, this is another one we were going to work on, um, kind of a um, fun and um, provocative uh, model that I work with uh, a friend of mine, and um, she's real edgy and gritty kind of girl. And so I wanted to uh, you know t you know reveal something about who she is. So you know everything's every portrait is different and. Um, Every person is different, right? So that's that's how it works. 
Well, thank you so much, Michael. This has been great and really informative. Lots of information. And everybody who's asking yes, this has been recorded. So thank you again, Michael. I appreciate it. It's been my pleasure. Thanks, guys. Thank you to Topaz. <laughs> All right. We'll talk to you soon. Right on.